Another great day, everyone. Today's concentration is on the derivation of the distance formula guided by the question, how far to the treasure, which tells us that probably we're going treasure hunting. Our main goals are primary goals. We derive the distance formula as well as to apply the distance formula. Before we start, let's take a look at this quote from Henry Ward Beecher. We should not judge people by the peak of excellence, but by the distance they have traveled from the point where they have started. Again, a food for thought for everyone. So let's start this discussion by taking a look at the situation of Kuli. Kuli is asking us for help. Help me to find the treasure, please. So we can actually help Kuli by telling him where to go. How many could we give us suggestions? Let us remember that at the end, it is Kuli's decision where he would be moving to the location of the treasure. One suggestion that we can give is say, Kuli, you have to go down. Count how many units. That would be five units down. Then from that position, you go to the right. How many units? Count that, and that would be 12 units to the right. So from police position, you are now here in the location of the treasure. Or probably we can say, Kuli, you have to go 12 units to the right, then 5 units down. Let us see if we can still go to the location correctly. There you have it he still was able to go to that treasure. But then again, these two are quite a long way from the original position to the treasure. Could there be a shorter way? Let's see. As the saying goes, the shortest distance is that line or line segment between two points. So let us ask Kuli to go directly following a diagonal path from his position directly to the treasure. That's the diagonal line. And that would be the shortest distance that we can tell or we can suggest to Kuli. But then if we are asked how many units would that traveling be, we cannot exactly count unlike a while ago when we said, you go down 5 units, you go to the right 12 units. Here, we have to find a way of coming up with the measure. So, what can we use? Let's see. Let's draw a vertical line from the original position downwards. Then, from where we stop to the right, a horizontal segment. So there are two segments intersecting, and since we have a vertical and a horizontal line, then we have a right angle because the two segments are actually perpendicular. And if there are perpendicular lines, there are right angles. If there is a right angle, then there is a right triangle. So let's see. The theorem that we're going to apply whenever we have a right triangle and we're talking about distances, we have the Pythagorean theorem. Let's take a look at the measures before we forget. One leg of the right triangle is five units as we have counted the down number of units. Then the other leg is actually 12, which is the horizontal motion. So to be easier so that it would be easier for us to identify the segments let's also identify the points or name the distinct points point m point a and point p so that following the theorem we can then say mp squared which is actually the hypotenuse of the right triangle is equal to the square of one leg Let's have this AP as leg 1 and the leg 2 or the second leg represented by MA. 
So manipulating that statement, we can then say by taking square roots, left, right, left, and right side, we have mp is equal to the square root of the sum of the squares of ap and ma, representing the legs of the right triangle. So that, substituting then the measures, leg 1 or ap is 12, leg 2 is 5, and then we perform the operations, we then have mp is equal to the square root of 12 squared is 144 and 5 squared is 25. Thus, when we simplify, we have the square root of 189. And when we take the square root of 169, rather, we will be arriving at 13 units. And by far, this is the shortest distance from point M to point P. Because a while ago, when we asked Cooley to go down 5 units, plus another 12 units to the right. Also, you have there, if he travels right first, that's 12 units to the right before going down 5 units. Those are still longer than the direct path from M to P, the diagonal path. Let us analyze where we got measures the formula remember that we said ap is 12 units and ma is 5 units by counting that was done by counting what if we don't count let's take a look at the coordinates of point m to be 3 7 the coordinates of point a to be 3 2 and the coordinates of point P to be 15, 2. Let's concentrate on the measure of segment AP. Segment AP, this measure. So how do we get 12? Take a look at the coordinates. First, check the Y coordinate. The Y coordinates are equal. While the X coordinates are different. So how do we get 12? Taking a look at the coordinates, we can say the 12 is taken by subtracting 3 from 15. That is 12. And how did we get 5? Let's take a look at MA, segment MA, with the endpoints M and A coordinates 3, 7, and 3, 2. The X coordinates are again equal. While the y coordinates are different, and we can see that when we subtract 7 and 2, we arrive at 5. So we then rewrite 12 and 5, and we have mp is equal to the square root of the sum of 15 minus 3, which is the difference of the x coordinates of points. And we have here the square of the difference of 7 and 2 pertaining to y coordinates we can do this if we have here specific points what about taking something in general so that it would be applicable for any points given let's see say we have here point b and point a and we are tasked to come up with the measure of the distance a b First, we cannot count as you can see here. Let's take coordinates. Let's take our A as our first, first point. Thus, the coordinates would be X sub 1 and Y sub 1. While point B would be our second point having the coordinates X sub 2, Y sub 2. So that we have to have like the previous discussion. We have to have a right triangle. And how can we come up with the right triangle? We have to draw a horizontal line and a vertical line. And these two segments are actually meeting at point C. So since we have a vertical and we have a horizontal segment meeting at point C, then we have perpendicular segments forming 
a right, tri right angle at C. And since our triangle in the figure has a right angle, then it is a right triangle. And we can apply the Pythagorean theorem. We are interested in the measure of AC, which is one leg of the triangle. Let's call it leg one. So to get the measure, let's see. The distance from the y-axis to point C is actually an x sub 2. That's the measure. And the distance from the y-axis to point A is an x sub 1 measure. So how do you get the measure now of the first leg? You can remove the green segment from the black and you, are, you will be arriving at the maroon segment. So we can say that leg 1 has the measure in general x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So we have the measure of one of the legs. We also take a measure, take the measure of the second leg represented by BC. So what do we do? Let's take the distance from the x axis to point B. That vertical distance is actually y sub 2. And the vertical distance from the x axis to point C is actually y sub 1, which is the same measure as this. So that we get the maroon segment, which is actually segment BC, as the difference of y sub 2 and y sub 1. So we say leg 2 has the measure in general y sub 2 minus y sub 1. So that we can now make use of the theorem, the Pythagorean theorem, to come up with the measure of AB. Let us say that D is equal to the measure of the segment AB. There, that's D. So by substituting this in, or using the Pythagorean theorem, we say the distance is equal to the square root of the square, the sum of the square of one leg and the square of the other leg measure. And what is the measure of the first leg? It's x sub 2 minus x sub 1. And the measure of the second leg is y sub 2 minus y sub 1. Thus, ladies and gentlemen, we are able to derive the distance formula. This would work for any two points given. Let us apply. We have again here two points, point A and point B. And the question is, what is the distance AB? So what are we going to do? First, we have to take a look at the set of coordinates point for point A. And that would be the x is 3 and the y is 6. So you have here 3, negative 3, 6. And what about point B? Point B has the x coordinate. From the x-axis, you go to the right twice. That would be 2. And then you have to go up 1, giving us the y-coordinate. And simply, what do we do? We substitute that in the distance formula. Considering that, going back, considering that, we now have here our x sub 2 will be, let's consider this to be our x sub 2. We consider this to be our x sub 1. Then 1 is our y sub 2. And then 6 is our y sub 1. So that we can then say the distance is equal to the square root of, you have x sub 2 is 2 minus the x sub 1, which is negative 3, we square that, plus our y sub 2, which is 1, minus our y sub 1, which is 6, and we also square that. So that's simplifying, doing the operations, mind the rules, gem does, 2 
minus a negative 3 is actually a plus 3. We square that plus 1 minus 6 is a negative 5. We also square. So that the distance would then be 2 plus 3 is 5 and when you square it that is 25. Negative 5 when you square it that would be a positive 25. So we can say the distance is equal to the square root of 50 or simply we say the distance is equal to the square root of 2 times 25 by factoring. So that it is easier for us to see that there is a perfect square factor in the radicand. So you can extract the square root of the perfect square factor 5 times the square root of 2. That is now the measure of the distance AB. What did we do? We applied what we have derived as the distance formula. Again, what is the distance formula? The distance can be solved by taking the square root of the sum of the squares of the differences of the x and the differences of the y. What was our basis in coming up with the formula? It is the Pythagorean theorem and our basis is a right triangle. So again, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. And if there is a certain topic you want me to discuss and you need it, feel free to write this in the comment sections below.